this on that, or do you have to do this on that? Can I actually turn it off? Sorry, I was the first one. Is that Zeus on that? Very good. Zeus? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Um, no. They have. Yeah, I don't know. Probably much more than Zeus. They boot up much quicker, um, but get because it's running in a production environment, it reloads everything anyway. Just oh, okay. For various reasons. Um, I mean, if you're using Heracle in a production environment anyway, you don't, you're not doing those rapid changes, rapid, te you're not testing every 10 seconds, you yeah. all tab. Yeah. Um, so that really quick feedback that Zeus gives you is really a necessity in Heracle. Um, I mean, on an initial app, you may push to Heracle five times a day. And that's just kind of fire and forget you just create and create and you're not going to look at it anymore. Um, so anyway, that should have fixed our error. Less than an hour, right? Twenty six minutes. And <laughs> <laughs> any questions? So, um, I mean, that's pretty much what we got as far as planned content. This actually last bit was not so much planned. <laughs> and I just thought it would be a cool little thing to show you guys actually what the process would be to actually work for us. Um, so what do you guys think? In terms of the format of class, the time of day, what day it was, the food, music style, the level of preparedness, slides, any feedback, thoughts? Smiling faces. <laughs> Trying to make this negative. <laughs> Did you guys feel like the level of the content, the depth, was too deep, not deep enough, in terms of how quickly we progressed? Um, I like the fact that you guys had like little ten minutes to get some time for us to actually you know, try it and see what we thought of ourselves. Yeah. I think it's also hard to assess because there, there are different people with different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. and, yep. So it's really, I, my opinion is hard to assess what it is. Uh, I like it, but I think. He has covered a pretty good amount of content in a short. But again, is, is it something that is digestible? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have to close it for hours. For yep. Oh, yeah. Well, it's pretty difficult to, to have a non programmer come in and try to understand this. I think right. there's a lot of terminology, but I, I think you handled it pretty well. I, mean, yeah. I really like the interactive part, too, because you're like, you know, you can see slides and it's one thing, but actually walking through it really helps that was good. give a, a framework for really what does it take and yep. that, that's necessary. <laughs> to me it was like a more of an overview and I liked it. I, I had I had done that before. But when Wesson was talking about the controls and all the behind the scenes stuff, I got a little bit lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that was that's part of the uh, dive of Ruby on Rails. It's kind of right. So I gotta, push know. that magic in the back of your head and just kind of ignore it for a while, and eventually it seeps out of this magic black box and you start understanding it. Right. Um, but so I guess it's just going to be a little bit more about that process. You, you've got the, I think you've got some links and recommendations. I saw that I, I yep. think some of the um, first slides. Yeah, just I ask each one of you guys your opinion. Be better, to, better to dive into Ruby and spend time there, or better to dive into Rails keep asking yourself any questions right now. What do you, what's your opinion on I coming from a web app background and just having programmed for a while, I wasn't afraid of just diving straight into the full framework personally. Mm -hmm. um, just because I had 
doing, having done PHP MVC frameworks and .NET PHP or MVC frameworks and Java MVC frameworks, I've seen enough patterns that I can be like, oh, what is this? And then work backwards from that. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also seen a lot of recommendations to start in Core Ruby. It really, just whatever you're comfortable with, diving in the deep end or just building gradually up, starting from Ruby and then learning. <coughs> if I may make a recommendation, uh, there's a, a pretty good book out there from the Pragmatic Programmers on scripting Ruby, uh, using Ruby for everyday uh, scripting tasks. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, so if you, if you had ever, ever wanted to uh, add a, an extension or ch modify an extension, uh, say to uh, a, a bunch of files, maybe look at uh, how would you do that the Ruby way. Google, uh, Google if somebody else has done it, but code it up yourself. Uh, the only way you learn is by doing. Yep, for sure. I'm going to give you the really hard answer, and I think you have to do both. Um, yeah. Rails is basically, and in order to really leverage Rails, you need to be able to speak with it. So it, it's kind of like you go loop around the track, figure out, I don't know this about Ruby, loop around the track, I don't know this about Rails, and it hits. That's been my experience. I don't know. Yeah, this is Ruby on Rails, and we hit some Ruby syntax, and you're like, what? Uh, Back out. And it's interesting to see, you know, what you guys do. I, I, I get it with working on like a local web server, just to get load stuff. And from my experience, though, I've got on a try to get what's called really cheap web hosts. And the problem there is it's always been a really hard to deploy, you know, like a Python based web thing. You just don't do it. And what they steer you towards is you know, PHP. Um, some sites I've seen seem to make it easier to do Ruby. I use Python. Really cheap web hosting, but I guess I need to take a look at the role. I love the internet. I think just tell all the cheap web hosting services. No. There's. I mean, if we were going to dive into the plugins, we say here's the use case situation of where we can throw through the job. Yeah, there's ones where we don't get a great fit. But in terms of doing this, so do you guys intend to keep doing uh, this single setting? Uh,
Um, yeah, really, I think all of us are just interested in more about various topics. So um, you guys also run the VMAP group? No, we're actually not affiliated with Vienna. This is just a, an ad hoc thing, but I'm sure you can mix and merge with other groups. Do you guys have sponsors to put this on, or how are you paying for this stuff? I sponsored it. Eventually, I'm hoping to get sponsored. Do you think um, donations? Do you think you can help? I thought this was great. <laughs> Sponsorship um, that may there's a workflow and process for that on my end. Um, is there any potential topics you guys would like to see? I know he's planning on doing like the Railscast method of recording his voice and getting some money or hosting seminars. Okay. Podcast kind of thing? Yep. Probably. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know where the teaching would end up, but um, the idea is to do a couple free seminars. Um, really understand you know, what I'm teaching and, and who I'm teaching to, and then get really good at it. And then if people want to come for some what was free content, and then um, you know 50% more that was added, um, so it's kind of tested by fire. Um, so it's actually bona fide worthwhile content. Um, I think one seminar that I would really enjoy seeing, kind of maybe collectively, is a, more of a technical front end of how do you make all of the HTML, the JavaScript, um, the place where I work, that's kind of one of our biggest considerations. We can do the back end stuff, which is pretty much just math equations, but the front end is more kind of like magical. And so, how do you do magical front end with Rails? Um, and really make it the same and make it beautiful instead of just not suck. A really big a key component to starting a business or having your application used is how it how it looks, what, what the design elements are. And for me personally, you know, I don't have a design eye, that's kind of why I partner with resources that are designers by trade. You know, they're really good with Photoshop and an eye for fonts. I really I hardly know what code to use, but I know it's important to kind of slack <laughs> which um, it's a lot of that plus like fonts, colors. That's why I think like boots back for actually kind of boots are even work for you. <laughs> yeah, I can make three rails work all day, but I actually had Bootstrap working, and I've got Bootstrap working on all sorts of apps. It's been weird. Um, but, you know, with Bootstrap and the power it has comes popularity, and how many of you have seen the obviously Bootstrap website? They're all over the place. The, the buttons, the header, the, you know, it's everything there. And yeah, you can customize them, but again, that requires design knowledge, so we're back to square one. <laughs> so you can have a decent looking website, but now it's gone full circle to going from decent to looking cliche and trashy. Just can't believe that. Yeah, I feel the same on my code, though. I didn't even know where control meant um, until today you told me control, what the control is. Yeah. I have a design background, I, I do front end and design, so it's sort of uh, yep. trying to run this because it, it can only add to my uh, knowledge. It's, it's, it's a, I guess it's a diversified group because I, I just don't have a programming background. I can put you on any good chance. Okay. Yeah. Well, would it be okay if I sent you guys like a little simple Google, Google survey? That'd be just like, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I was going to say that. Like a <coughs> upload or something. It, so that people, if they have something really specific, can put it in or nothing really. So just so that we hear people's voice. I'm sure other people in this group have like 
building specific knowledge and we can get other people involved in it too. Lightning talk? What's that? Lightning talk? That would be awesome, yeah. Or um, come to the room meeting at the end of the month and lightning talk. Can you guys feel free to roll next? I think that's all I got. I think that's all I got. See you, Sean. I just got some back. Did you guys want to go? Yes. That's fine. Somebody asked me how I got on about it. I said, I think I was going to have to know. Yeah. And like I said, part of my goals in my day job this year is that people have doing sponsorship, is hosting the hackathons, doing classes like this for free. Thank you for that. So is that your resolution? Uh, I mean, kind of. Uh, mostly just my business goals, but my day to day career goals. Yeah. Where do you guys work? Is that in the airport? Sorry? Where do you work? Uh, I work in United Alpha. Okay. Our local part is called Nobu. Called what? Nobu, N O V U. So it's pretty much Rails 100% of the time. I was there for two days. We'll have to talk about that. What was it called? I'm sorry. <laughs> no boo. And no boo. Oh. As far as future topics, I'd be very interested to see or hear about how Rails interacts with um, some of the JavaScript from UC frameworks, like Backbone. Yep. Um, I kind of alluded to that a little bit, where Rails is just an API and you can create a Backbone and the front end with this new Rails API. Yeah, and that'd be really. Uh, we, we have a co-worker who's spent the last four weeks of his life kind of in the backbone land. So I did, I did a little bit of backbone with integrating it with um, jQuery mobile. So I just did a little HTML5 mobile app, but using backbone to kind of, or no, sorry, Sencha. Yeah, Sencha. Oh, jQuery mobile. All of them are too, like, more online right now. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a topic, for sure. Well, you guys are free to stick around. There's still food in the back. Feel free to stick in. Um, yeah. We'll be shutting down the shop. We'll be like, at four. <laughs> <laughs>